Hey, I'm uh, John Witzke. Um, got this uh, body of work up uh, called No Strange Land here at the Abert Center. Um, I am the uh, director of exhibitions at uh, Sulphur Studios in Savannah and a teacher at uh, Georgia Southern University. And um, just here to talk about these paintings today. Um, this first painting that we're looking at is called Death is a Door. Uh, it's this entire body of work that I was working on kind of has to do with, um, with my grandfather and his time uh, as a soldier in World War II um, and he was stationed in China. Earlier this summer, I found a, a, a box of photographs that uh, he had taken uh, while he was living in China. And I was kind of just struck by the relationships that he had created and kind of the community that he had, he had kind of found <clears throat> around um, the people that lived in China, the Chinese people, and also then the, uh, the soldiers that he was with uh, in his unit. And this, this first painting, um, I think I was really struggling to figure out how to kind of create this, uh, this work. And I really began to paint these layers and layers and layers of paint and slowly started kind of peeling away layers um, using a razor blade and also using a Dremel tool. Um, and I feel like that, that kind of the peeling away of paint was also a way of kind of peeling away these uh, layers of maybe uh, this kind of the unknown that surrounded um, my grandfather. My grandfather I never really knew and so it was kind of through these photographs and through these paintings that I began to actually kind of get to know him. Um, he died when I was younger and he also had uh, had Alzheimer's when I was you know when I did know him so he was never really who he was. So looking through these photographs I was really get, uh, able to get a sense of the actual man um, and really start to see the way that he was able to deal with other people. So you can see I kind of had, uh, this is my grandfather here, and then um, these are the other guys in his unit, and they're kind of mirrored here. But they're kind of just fading away. They're, they're, they're actually really kind of ghostly figures. They're not really fully there. They're kind of just disintegrating. And I think that kind of relates to my, the, the memory I have, the, the last bits of his memory in his life. And uh, as I'm kind of trying to un unveil this kind of knowing of him, I think these kind of the, these colored dots up at the top um, can represent the ideas of blood and of uh, flesh and blood and bone, um, but also are these kind of elemental forces that kind of hold the kind of hold the painting together in some way or ground it in this uh, in the in the actual world. But all of the paintings that, that are uh, in this series are all kind of based off of these photographs that I found um, in the, the shoebox that my mother gave me that, that were my grandfather said he took. Um, so we've got these four, I've got these four men here in this series. It's my grandfather and his, and his uh, unit. And then if we want, I don't know if you want to move over to this other painting here. Um, but I found this photograph also that he had taken of these uh, four Chinese boys. And I was struck by the similarity in these, these four, you know, China, young men, four Chinese boys, they seemed to be like around 16 years old, but they had the same kind of attitude I felt like that uh, my grandfather and his unit had. And um, there was just something about this uh, these two totally different cultures um, kind of being represented, but being kind of so similar at, the, at this moment. You know, very, this, this age of being 16 and being, you know, young and ready to do, to go on some kind of adventure, not really realizing that that adventure may just actually be your death. Um, or maybe you are realizing that, I'm not sure, but... Uh, this painting is made with uh, this kind of wild metallic pigment. All of my paintings are made through using dry pigment, mixing them with uh, oil. 
Um, so everything's kind of made by hand. Um, so with this, I used this metallic pigment, and I kind of mixed it with this wild blue. And you can see this blue here. I'm not sure how it comes out on the, uh, on the screen, but this blue is com comes through a rubbing of the, the metallic. The metallic comes out this kind of brownish uh, color, but then if I were to rub it, I could, do, I could probably do it right now. If I start to rub it, this blue will start to emerge out of it. And so a lot of this is made through that type of, uh, type of um, method. I also then paint early on, you can see kind of colors kind of emerging out from the background. And that's all from underpainting that I do and then allowing that to kind of seep through, through uh, either through scraping away or through um, allowing medium to kind of uh, disintegrate the paint around it. But I just saw this painting next to this other painting of my grandfather's uh, and his, his buddies. I don't know, it just seemed, it just really speaks, I think they really speak to each other. And I found it interesting, the thought of that, um, with all of the kind of divisiveness that we have and the kind of animosity that exists um, towards China right now, I was thought it interesting that we were allies with China at this, at this period in time. Um, and we kind of had joined together to kind of fight this greater enemy. Um, I'll, I'll move over here. This, this painting is very different than the other paintings. Um, this is the painting called In No Strange Land. And I think when I was making this work, um, I kind of created it almost like a Rorschach. I took the two, basically took, <laughs> took paint. I made all these like this. Took the paint, poured it onto the canvas and kind of squished it together and allowed it to kind of turn into this new, this new thing. But I kind of had this feeling of this idea of the exotic, the idea of this exotic landscape. Um, kind, of the, uh, kind of thinking about Chinese landscape painting at the time, uh, and also thinking about the, the ways that we imagine a culture to be and how different that is than what the culture actually is in the end. Um, so here we have, you know, I've got lots of metallic paints. I've got lots of, uh, fluorescent paints. I've got a lot, lots of underpainting. There's also all, all of this kind of scraping and kind of revealing again, coming through with this work. Um, in my mind, I can imagine that as my grandfather is being sent to go to China, maybe he has these preconceived notions of what what uh, the land will be or what, what the landscape is. And I certainly uh, can have that as well. And I think that that's, I think this, this painting maybe speaks to that kind of idea of the, of the exotic, of the unknown. And I, you know, I called this painting In No Strange Land and that's the title of this, this, this show um, entirely. Um, and I think there's a lot of kind of hidden things within the painting as well. There are faces that kind of emerge um, out, of the, out of the background. Um, there's a, there are a lot of things that you could look for and kind of find in the painting. I know when people look at the, the painting, they always see different things. Um, I really struggled with the idea of whether this painting fit in with the rest. And I think that actually I, I do feel pretty comfortable with it. Um, I'll, I want to finish with this last painting. And um, this painting is called uh, They're Fading. And it's, I've been using this uh, fluorescent white paint. And so from certain angles, the figures actually do completely fade from view or in different light, the figures will completely kind of disappear. But um, these were then, you know, more, uh, again, I think, another group of, uh, of guys from my, um, from my grandfather's unit in the war. And I just, they just had this, such an iconic kind of uh, feeling to me. You know, they were all kind of resting in the Jeep. You can see these guys are kind of posing. Uh, they almost look like movie stars or something. I can imagine these guys on the set of some movie. Um, and I named the painting They're Fading because I was kind of feeling this kind of, uh, 
this idea of these guys kind of fading from life and fading from memory and kind of being lost to, to the sands of time. This painting, along with the, the uh, four Chinese boys painting, was also made with this kind of weird patina and this metallic paint that, um, as it kind of rubs away, the blue, this blue emerges out of it. And then I was also kind of throwing this almost, almost raw pigment of this kind of fluorescent purple. There's almost no medium in it. It's nearly just strictly pigment. You can, if you look closely, you can almost see the dust. I bet if you flicked it with your finger, it would sprinkle off. Um, it's that, it's that fragile. Um, I think this, this painting and the Chinese boy painting um, are both just incredibly fragile paintings. But uh, yeah, that's it.